can't see the sunshine. Did you see it today? Yeah, they shipped it up from Florida, just for a little bit. Make me feel at home. Good to see ya. Sweet night last night. A uh, little taste of heaven. Mike Lant would say, a little taste of heaven to go to heaven in. Page, what is that, 248? You got your old red hymnal? Page 248. In our lives, you know what our duty is to bring glory to the Lord? Glory to his name. Are you ready? Down at the cross where my Savior died. Stand and sing with all your heart. Tell me if you're happy. Are you yeah. really happy? Yeah. Yes. Sweet night last night. I'm telling you, you just couldn't beat it. And so uh, we're glad to see you and glad to be with you. We're praising God. Another another just a sweet time and, a, and another good day. And let's praise him with all your heart. Glory to his name. All right, Ronnie. Sing it down. with those round about you. Just tell them that you love them uh, because he lives.
your question brush your I've been asked that more this week than all my life yeah, that's good. the answer is I plead the fifth all right we'll try a new one for you and if we mess it up we'll sing some that we know all right let's go here we go <clears throat> I just want to say I love you, Lord, and I'm so very thankful for all the blessings you bestowed on me, even though I am so unworthy. You've given me more than I deserve. Your goodness and mercy and your favor for all these things and so much more. I just want to say I love you, Lord. I just want to say I love you, Lord, and I'm so very thankful for all the blessings you bestowed on me. Goodness and mercy and your favor For all these things and so much more I just want to say I love you, Lord So many times I've come into this place And I've asked you, Lord, to make a way I cried out for you to meet a need Lord, I ask you if you hear my plea But today you won't hear from my lips A petition or a prayer request I've only got one thing to say It's a word of thankfulness I just want to say I love you, Lord, and I'm so very thankful for all the blessings you bestowed on me, even though I am so unworthy, you've given me more than I deserve, goodness and mercy and your favor, for all these things and so much more, I just want to say I love you, Lord, you are worthy of our highest praise, you are holy and we bless your name, you are worthy and you are true. I just want to say I love you, Lord, and I'm so very thankful for all the blessings you bestowed on me, even though I am so unworthy, you've given me this more than I deserve, goodness and mercy and
we'll do one more and then have uh, Cal come and preach for us. I was mentioned uh, to Cal, and I think probably here's where I want to do it, and then we'll we'll sing one more. But uh, he he mentioned uh, our our brother Billy Fields last night, and many of you know what their family's going through. And I just thought uh, I thought it'd be appropriate if we just had a special prayer uh, for him tonight. And I know there's probably very few in here that have not had their lives touched by Billy and Peggy, and the brokenness that they're going through. Um, I think just the least we could do is, is pause together and just uh, collectively as their brothers and sisters in Christ, ask God to do what only he can do and to, to bind the wounds and heal those broken hearts. So I tell you what, Justin, if you wouldn't mind, come on up and I want you to, to pray over them. And if you wouldn't mind, would you just stand with us? And as Justin prays that, that you would pray that God will just uh, heal the, their broken hearts, provide comfort and grace. And then we'll we'll sing this last song and get out of the way. Bless you, buddy. Oh, kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus and through the power of the blood. God, we pray for Brother Billy and Miss Peggy, God, their family. We can't even imagine what they're going through. But God, we know that you hold the future. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, God, we pray that you would comfort. God, we pray that you would give a peace that passes all understanding. God, we pray that you would just comfort them. Lord, through this situation, God, the tragedy that has occurred, God, we pray for souls to be saved. God, we pray for people to be encouraged, uplifted. Lord, we pray that you touch Brother Billy and Miss Peggy from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet, God. Lord, we pray you begin to fan the flames. Lord, we pray you'd encourage them. Lord, touch them, God. Do what only you can do, God. We'll give you the praise, honor, and glory. Oh, for it's in Jesus' sweet, precious name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, sir. Amen. Now this Christian life It's not always been easy Oh, I've had days that I've asked the Lord why Cause I've seen the heartaches And the pain of some loved ones Till it seemed all Baby. 
that's when you looked Oh, and he had sent you a little stream That's when you looked heaven's away Oh, and you had to say Lord, you sure been a good God to me He's good when I'm happy He's good when I'm sad He's good when I'm somewhere between I say Brother Calvin Evans as he comes to preach for us tonight. According to Luke, for Ruth, been so many of them. And I appreciate those of you. Not, but I, I did, and uh, but I, I developed a file, and on that file I'd put one word, unusual. That's what I labeled that file, and what what crossed my mind was in the Bible unusual people, and I'm not talking about strange people. I'm talking about people that you just don't usually hear anything preached about them. And and I'm I develop sermons on unusual people. Lord willing, I'm getting ready to preach one at our church coming up that I personally have not heard any me- now there's nothing new under the sun. I've just never heard any messages preached on unusual people. Then I have a section that's unusual And I take phrases that, you know, most of those came out of them. But I'm not preaching on passage. I'm preaching on just... When I was developing... I am, brother... 
encourage all preachers. You need to know sharpeneth iron. And uh, we're not taking from one another. It's just all of us can give maybe one, one sentence or one thought or, or one sermon idea that the Holy Spirit will use. Now, here's the account as it happened. Let's begin with verse 57. Let's do that. Luke 9. I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. So he said, Lord, I'm gonna be with you. I'm gonna follow you. Jesus didn't condemn him, but Jesus did warn him. Verse 58 is the warning. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. Now, how many of you have heard that passage? So many times. We've all used it and rightfully so. Because really when you, when you look at it, uh, it, it stands to reason that we would use that frequently. But what I, what I was drawn to is the three words, the first three words that Jesus spoke. Foxes have holes. Now maybe you've heard a lot of sermon on foxholes. I haven't. And uh, I hear a lot of preaching but I haven't heard many sermons on foxholes. So there's two things that I, I caught right away out of this. Most people are familiar with bird's nests. They're not very familiar with foxholes. And when they hear the word foxhole, they think in terms of military service and times of war. But that's not what he's referring to here. He's referring to the animal, the fox. So the first thing Jesus does, just write this down, is he teaches us about the cost. This man wanted to follow the Lord and the Lord said, if you're gonna follow me, where I go, there'll be a cost. And the cost is expensive that you pay for discipleship. You don't have to do one thing. It doesn't cost you a dime to be saved. Doesn't cost you anything to know the Lord as your savior. But I will say this, it will cost you something to follow the Lord. And it's not because of the Lord, it's just the fact that we're in a world that doesn't want the Lord. And he said, as they've hated me, they'll hate you. As they despise me, they'll despise you. We'll be in the world, not of the world. It will cost you something. It won't cost you anything to be saved, but it'll cost you something for the anointing. You'll have to pay a price. And I'm not gonna get on that because we'll end it right there. But he talked about the cost. And then to try to, to show the cost, he gives the comparison. He said, let, let, me, let me give you a comparison to help you know what it's gonna cost you to follow me and to have my hand on you and for me to anoint you to be used by me. And the cost is this. He said, the foxes have holes, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. So he said, even a fox has a hole, but I don't have a place to lay my head. Now, usually we preach that in a negative context. And we say, Jesus is saying, poor me, because I don't have anywhere to lay my head. That's not true. He said, I would rather have nowhere to lay my head than to have to live in a foxhole. That's what he's really saying. That's the context of that verse. Well now, why would he make that comparison? Well one thing that I noticed immediately when I started studying about foxholes, we call them the hole leads to the den. That's what we know in our normal language, but really for anyone that knows much about fox at all, really a fox den is known as an earth. So he's saying, I'd rather have nowhere to lay my head then the only place I have to lay it is in the earth. If this world is all there is, he said, I would rather have nothing than this earth. So he's comparing it to say, don't you feel sorry for me that I don't have anything because I'm better off than even the fox that has the earth. And many of you are like that fox that all you have is this earth. He said, but I'd rather have nothing than to think all I have is this earth. I had a 
lady one time that lived a horrible life with a husband that was stooped in sin and he was a terrible, terrible alcoholic and he was a good man till he, till he got under the influence and when he got under the influence he did things that, uh, that it wasn't right and he had a tendency to resent her being a Christian and her serving the Lord and one night I saw her in a service and I mentioned to her, I could tell she had a lot of makeup on trying to conceal her eye and I said, what happened to you? And she started to cry. She said, can we talk after service? And I said, yes, I'd like that. So after the service, the pastor and myself, we met with her for just a moment and I said, what's going on? And she said, well, he got drunk before church and said, told me I'm not going to church and I said yes I am going to church and I'm not going to disrespect you but I'm married to the Lord too and I'm, I'm going to church and he said no you're not and said he beat me he said finally when he got drunk and passed out I come on to church and I said oh honey you can't live like that what are you going to do and she said she started crying I never saw anything like it in all my life she said so help me preacher this is what I'm going to do Tomorrow I'm going to get up and make him his favorite breakfast. I'm going to fry his eggs the way he likes it. I'm going to fry his bacon the way he likes it. I'm going to fix everything that he likes to eat for breakfast. I'm going to make the coffee. I'm going to have it all done by the time he wakes up and I'm going to serve it to him with a smile. And I said, sweetheart, how can you do that? And she said, can I tell you why I'm going to do that? I said, I'd like to know. She said, because if he don't get saved, this is the only enjoyment he has. This is the only heaven that he'll know because there is no heaven for him if he dies like this. But she said, for me, I'm not gonna be in this earth forever. And she said, the Lord one day will take me out and I'd rather leave knowing that I did my best to help him. Now, she would not have been wrong to make other choices. Don't miss me. I would never condone someone going through pain like that and undo suffering. It's wrong. Shouldn't happen. But she said, I've compared the two, and I have heaven, and it has nothing but this earth. Aren't you glad that this earth isn't all there is to it? I would hate to think that all we do is live our life and work and get old and get sick and die and there's, that's all there is to it. I've got no this earth and the Lord said it may look like I have nothing here but you haven't seen all of it. I know where I came from and I know where I'm going back to and where I go, you can come also. What a comparison. What a comparison. And then he went on to talk about the convenience. He said, why do foxes live like that? Why do they live in the earth? Can I tell you why most people get saved? Don't get saved, brother. Can I tell you why they live a sinful life? Because it's more convenient to be lost. Any dead fish can float downstream. A live one has to go against the current to go upstream. And it's a lot more convenient just to go along. A lot more convenient to go along with the earth and what the earth thinks and what the world thinks. A lot easier to do that than it is to stand and pray. Trust me on that. People don't like preaching. They don't like preachers that preach on sin, especially they don't like it. And they get upset over it but yet they have to hear because if the preacher doesn't preach and tell you, this isn't all there is to it. You're going somewhere. When you close your eyes in death, what will it be for you on this coming Saturday? Uh, I'll be preaching. Brian will be helping me with one of the ladies in our church, 97 years of age, about to turn 98, had 18 children. She got sick last weekend and uh, they, they took her to the hospital. 
right before we came down and she passed. We were with her on Sunday with the family. And when we go back, we'll have her funeral. Boy, do you know how good it's going to feel for me to stand there and tell that crowd, it's okay to weep for yourself, but she's in a better place. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank God this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. Our treasures are laid up yonder somewhere beyond the blue. But fox, they're, they're funny. They like, can be, you know they can do, but they're lazy. They won't do. And they just move in. And in particular, they love badger holes because badgers do more of the work like a fox would do if they were doing it. They like to just move in. And then also they'll take rabbit holes and they'll try to, try to enlarge that if they need to. But they're, 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 they're not really inspired to dig much. And they're not picky about it either as long as they don't have to do it. Well, enough said right there. So really what they do is they don't build a home, they steal a home. They're like a hermit crab. They don't have a shell of their own. They just find an empty one and move in and make everybody think it's theirs. But there is no easy way. That's what Jesus is saying. That's not how this thing works. It doesn't work like that. And if they haven't taken over, taken over a hole from another animal, the other way they get their hole is they inherit it from their daddy. Some people, all they've got is what's been passed down. All they know is what they've learned from their parents. Their parents were sinners. Their parents were lost. They're lost. Their parents love the world. They love the earth. They love the earth. And it may not be right, but it's convenient. And what have we done? We have tried to change the church to make it more convenient on people to serve the Lord. It's not a matter of convenience, it's a matter of commitment. And it will cost us something, but let me say this, no matter what it costs you, it's worth it. Pay the price. It's when, by the way, what you pay to serve the Lord down here, I promise you, You've got a payday coming at the end of the road. And even if the devil says that you don't, he's a liar. Something better for us this is yet to come. May not be convenient, but yet it's worth it. Another reason he said, I don't want a foxhole, because he knew, he, I mean, he created the animals, he knows. He knows the components of their earth. When you enter the hole in a fox hole, you, there's a ramp that goes down. Do you know something? When you get in the earth, you just go down farther. You go down deeper. The more you get in this world, the deeper you go. Before you know it, it'll trap you. And when it goes down into that ramp, there's compartments, components of that den. There's compartments inside of it. It has an area where the young are born it, and they, they raise their young there. It has an area where they store food. They are what they call surplus killers. They, they, they always, they're greedy. They hoard up more than what they need and they put it all away because they always feel like there's not enough there. So even if they don't need it, they'll go ahead and take it and put it in their den in a compartment even if they don't need it. That's the earth. That's the mentality of this world. More, more, more. Give me more. Give me more. Let me tell you something. You can get all you want in this world, but I'll make you this promise. There is not enough in this world to satisfy any single person that's under this roof tonight or anywhere else that we ever travel and preach. This world will never satisfy you. There is a longing that only Jesus can feel in your life and satisfy you. 
the components. Then two, I think it's interesting that they camouflage themselves. They like to find a place, for example, they like to find a hole near a tree so no one can see where they're at. And they like to be in solitary places. Years ago around home, uh, you, you seldom saw a fox. I mean, you wouldn't see a fox of the daytime. They sure wouldn't get close to, to people of the day. Now they've become populated more. And they're not as afraid. And they'll appear more in public. You'll see more of them. You'll see more of them dead along the road where they've been hit by vehicles. But there was a time it wasn't that way. They like to remain solitary. They feel like the earth is their safe location. And because that's their safe location, they, they, never, they will never move out. They feel at home there. They feel safe there. And the only way you can get a fox to move out of their den, and they reuse the same den over year after year after year as long as they're alive. Only way you can get them to move out of the earth is two things. If they get irritated or if they get to a place where it is no longer convenient for them, if it's inconvenient in the fact that people see them. I, uh, I, I tell you, one thing the pandemic did, it made it too inconvenient for people to come to church. Oh, I thank God, I thank God for the live stream. I thank God for all that. I, and I wouldn't take that back for anything. Don't misunderstand. It's a great way to reach out. But also, if you're not careful, you'll miss out while you're able to be in places like this. You ought to soak this in while you're here. It's not being convenient for you to get here, but I promise you something. There's something about being in the fellowship of believers that we find strength from one another, but the world tries to isolate themselves. And the more they get in a solitary place, the more, the, the more they realize that's not a good place to be because God made us to be social beings. People now, they get in a solitary place and they get down in the earth and they want to stay there. And they fire their shots from their phone. Social media wars, they call it. Somebody says something they don't like, I'll just defriend them, debug them, whatever you do. Get rid of them. I'll write them off. I'll not answer. I'll ignore them. You can tell I don't use social media. I am not against social media. It's just, to me, it's a rabbit hole that I'd go down and waste too much time for me. God bless you if you don't. But uh, I, I just, to me, I know myself. And the other thing is I have to preach to people and that way when they come, they can never say I saw it on Facebook because I'm not on Facebook. Lady told me, said, man, I messaged you and messaged you and, and I'm not speaking to you. You never did answer me. I said, you didn't message me. She said, why? I said, because I'm not on it. I'm not against that. Listen, I'm not against any of it, but what happens is people get wrapped up in that. And I talked to a person a few months ago, and they told me, said, man, I tell you, I saw this, and I just let them know. I, I tell you, I just gave them a piece of my mind. I said, you better not give away too much. You don't have much to spare. You got to be careful. Now, don't get angry at me, but I'm, I'm preaching the truth. We need each other. We all need. God intended us to do this alone. The preacher needs the people and the people need the preacher. And you all need one another. God's people, I, they take such a terrible hit. But I'm here to tell you, God's people's the best people in all the world. They love you when you're sick and pray for you when you're hurting. and They help you when you're down and they encourage you. We need one another. And I'm glad I can say there's not one person in here tonight that I couldn't come to you and hug your neck and tell you that I love you and tell you I'm glad I'm going to heaven together with you. Well, that's not going over very well. Let me move on. 
Uh, let me give you one more thing. How's that? We, we see the fact that he tells the cost. He talks about the comparison. Talks about the convenience. Talks about the compartments, the components of the den. Talks about the camouflage, how they try to camouflage themselves. But then I want you to look at the comfort. They find a comfort there. They find a comfort in their earth. Now, do you remember what I said? They're, they don't like to dig a hole. They like to take a hole over. Do you know how you can tell if that hole is a rabbit hole or a badger hole or a fox hole? Can I tell you how you can tell the difference? Fox stink. They mark their territory. And when they mark their territory, they, they don't care. They leave their scat there. You say, what's that? Go home and learn that for yourself. <laughs> they stink it up. And they know, do you know badgers will try to stay in there thinking that if I live there, then eventually they'll move out. But finally, it stinks so bad that the badgers have to move out because they bring so much filth into the den. They tell a foxhole by how it smells. You can tell. Just has a different odor to it. And because it smells so bad, I, I'm always reminded when I got on this point, I went back. Brother Roger Duncan, when he would preach, he loved that illustration. He talked about those boys in college that went off and they had a goat for a mascot. You remember that? And he said they thought they'd play a prank and they took the goat and they said when they got the goat in the car, said, what are we gonna do with it? They thought it'd be funny, you know, to, to take the mascot of the school. What are we gonna do with it? One of them said, well, we'll just take it to the dorm, let it live with us. And the other one said, well, what we do about the smell said so don't worry the goat will get used to it <laughs> thank you Raj let me tell you where we're at in this thing that fox is comfortable because it gets to the place it can't smell that odor anymore and I'm here to tell you, we've tried to make ourselves comfortable in this world. So comfortable now that suddenly things that used to repel us doesn't repel us anymore. You just get used to it long enough and you'll get at home there and you'll feel right at home there and nobody else can stand it, but you'll live right in it. I'm telling you, this is a filthy old world. I mean, it's a filthy world. When I read about these places, taking these little kids and doing what they do with them, it's filthy. When I think about the things that's happening in this country, of people now, the things that they're involved in, and things even in the church that the church years ago would say, let's clean that out. That's too filthy. Doesn't belong there. But we've lost that indignation against those things. You say, well, preacher, you gotta love everybody. Yes, you love everybody. But that doesn't mean you have to love the filth that comes along with it. There's a time that you have to say, I wanna be clean before God. And even though I'm here, am I the only one that I feel like a misfit in this world? anymore. The world's gone down a terrible path and it's getting worse and worse and worse but hallelujah, I don't care how bad it gets soon and very soon the trumpet shall sound the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Goodbye to the filth. I'm not trying to see how much sin I can get involved in. And still, and still somehow, please God, 
It's not my goal. And by the way, you're trying to drag me back to what God brought me. Some of us know, and we know where we probably would have been had it not been for Jesus. But thank God in love, he reached down in the field and he picked us up and cleaned us up. We're not on our way to heaven because we're better than anyone else. We're on our way to heaven because he's the best. People all the time say, why does God let people go through such hard things? If we had heaven here all the time, we'd never want to go to heaven. But you may have to go through some things that if you'll pardon my English, that just stink. But thank God you know the difference. I'm not saying you enjoy every place you're at and you enjoy everything you go through. But I'm saying when you get to heaven, you'll say, thank God I made it. I'm through it and it's behind me. I'll close with this. John Bennett runs our sound. His grandfather was a dear old godly preacher. And when I was a boy preacher, I was only 16 when I started preaching, and he, he would call me to come to his church and preach. And it was a good-sized church. I'd go preach, and when I would preach, he'd get out, and man, I'm telling you, it was a mess. Ron, you talk about a mess. I would have, I'd have Moses in the fiery furnace and Daniel up the sycamore tree. I was doing the best I could but I get so nervous, I still get nervous. You say, you get nervous, Candy knows how nervous I get, I still get nervous. Sometimes I almost get sick before I get up to preach, I get that nervous. Why are you so nervous? Because I'm handling the word of God. And I, I he, would, he would come to me and I'd, I'd mess everything up and I'd feel that tall. And he'd walk up to me, put his arm around me. My, what a sermon never heard such a sermon in my life he said now get your book out I want to book you again to come back and preach John I love that old man he just kept having me back and he got he got older his mind got feeble and he got so that he didn't know me anymore he was always polite he'd act like he knew me robbed him of his mind Someone said, why does that happen? God's already took care of that. See, he don't save you with your mind. He saves you with your heart. So if I lose my mind, don't worry about me. My heart's okay. (laughs) By the way, you stand a good chance losing your mind too. We're not above and beyond it. With the heart, we believe under righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made under salvation. We're not saved by what we know. We're saved by what we believe. So they put him down in the nursing home and it broke my heart. Somebody that had been a hero that now is lying in a bed and just, you know how the devil does? See there, lived his whole life for God. Look at him now, down here in this nursing home. Don't know people, don't know this one, don't know that, don't know you. Look at that. I went down there to visit him one day. I said, Dewey, I'm going to have prayer for you about my head. I had prayer. And when I said amen, he started preaching. He did. He started preaching. You know, the devil was beating me up about how unfair it was and how unjust it was. And there he is lying in a bed. And so I stand there. And I stood there for 45 minutes to an hour and he was still preaching. Don't sound like he forgot what was most important. And he was preaching and he was preaching and I, I, I was on my way to a revival that night and little nurse come up beside him and she said, preacher, said, now it wouldn't be rude, said, I know you've got revival tonight, said, you just ought to slip on out 
and go on. I said, well, I, I can't hardly do that. I just can't do it. And she yeah. said, preacher, listen to me. You've got to do it. She said, do you know how long he's going to preach? <laughs> and I said, I don't have a clue. John, I'm glad you're here because it's established in the mouth of one or two witnesses. This is what she told me. She said, he will preach until he's hoarse and loses his voice. Isn't that something? I get in the car and there comes the devil again. See there? What good does that do? And the more I thought about it, I thought, devil, you are a liar. You see how much God loves sinners? In a nursing home where people, a lot of them don't have families and no one else to care. There's no pastor and there's no preacher for them. You took one of the great pastors in our area, put him in a bed. I don't know who's there down the hallway passing by that gets to hear an old preacher preach until he's hoarse. But by the way, he's not hoarse tonight. He'll never lose his voice now. Thank God he is in that land where while the angels roll, we will bless his name and give glory to the Lamb that sits on the throne. You say, well, I don't have nothing better than a foxhole. Better than this earth. Your heads are bowed for one moment. You're here tonight. I can't, I don't know, I just feel impressed to do this. I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody's heart. Nobody's looking on. You're here tonight and you're without the Lord. This earth is all you have, but it's not all you need. You know that if you died right now, heaven would not be your home. You know that there's unconfessed sin in your life. You know you're not ready to meet God. And I'm not about to tell you this will save you, but I'll tell you what it will do. It'll burden the hearts of God's people to pray when they know somebody in this crowd that doesn't know the Lord would recognize their need of the Lord. Nobody's looking on, I promise you that. Would you just raise your hand and say, Cal, I want you to pray for me, and I want God's people to pray for me. I, I need the Lord. I need to have peace in my heart. God bless you. That's, that's fine. Put your hand right back down. We're not out to embarrass you. Somebody else, you just raise your hand right now. Raise your hand right now. Pray for me. Pray for me. I need the Lord. How many of you, and I know you wouldn't be dishonest, but I'll tell you what happens. Pride gets us. How many of you would say, Preacher, I'm just in a place in my life that it just stinks. I mean, I'm in a bad place. I'm not saying you caused it. You're responsible for it. You're just at a place you never thought you'd be. And you'd say, Pretty, I want you to pray for me. God will encourage my heart in this meeting to carry on. God bless you. You'd raise your hand. God bless you, sis. Bless you, sis. Bless you, brother. How many others? God bless you, sis. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else. God bless you, sis. Someone else. Just raise your hand. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. God bless you. I see your hand. Somebody else. Just raise your hand right now. Pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else. Pray for me. God bless you. Bless you, my brother. I know you love God with all your heart, but you're just at a tough place right now. Pray for me, Cal. God bless you. Bless you, brother. God, God bless you, sis. Someone else. God bless you, sis. Bless you, sis. God bless you. Now this is what I'm going to ask you to do. God bless you. I'm glad you raised your hand. But what you need is just a little refreshing from glory to remind you this earth isn't all there is to it. And where you're at, you won't always be. There's a better day coming. And maybe by you coming and bringing your load, your burden to the Lord, if you come, you don't have to tell anybody what it is. Just come and thank the Lord that where you are is not where you're going to stay. 
the Lord's with you. And maybe your coming would help somebody that's unsaved to come to. Let's stand together as they sing. Right on the first verse, we're not going to tarry. Right on the first verse, you're going to determine the invitation. Will you come? Bless you, Ron.
Bless them. I know yes. you miss them down here as yes, much as we do. We do. Yes, this we is do. what we'll do. If if you want to break, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to do two things. I want you to find someone not around you, but away from you, and hug their neck and tell them you love them. Praise God. Glad you're going to heaven together. Yeah. Yep. Take your break, and if you come back. Mike Blanton's preaching next. Yes, sir. And I'm going to ask you to do this. Let's pull it out of him tonight. <laughs> Will you do that? Amen. You'll hear the music. We'll start the next service. Take just a break. Turn to someone. Tell them you love them in the Lord.
Heaven's Jubilee. Do you know that song? It's page 110 in your old red hymnals. How many of you use that old red hymnal? How many? Hold them up. Yeah, I don't know. Not very many. Kind of outdated. And it doesn't have all the songs in it, but it's got enough for me. I still like it. I still like it. Good, good, set, good message. Good. My boys sung, didn't they sing good? Cow Ray, God love him. We're blessed people. We're blessed. People. You know, I got the, I got these preachers on speed dial. You know what I mean? Ain't that good? I can't see the dial, so you just speed dial. All right, stand and sing. Heaven's Jubilee. What is the first glad? What is the first word? There you go, brother. You're on the ball. Got these ladies here. All right, brother, do it, Ronnie Weaver. Quartet and what a privilege, but I didn't know after all these years we'd think about him every time we sing this old song. What, what a day that would be when my Jesus I
just told me, said, Cal, it's up to you. Uh, you just do what you feel led to do. Get who you feel led to sing. And uh, who I feel led to sing is not here tonight. <laughs> they had to go back. Uh, but really, I'm, gonna, I'm being sincere here. I feel led to let the man of God preach. First time Candy and I ever went to a Brazilian steakhouse, they gave us a little card. It was green on one side, red on the other. They had 17 kinds of meat. And they said, when you want more, just turn it up green. When you want them to stop serving, just turn it up red. I hope you've got things turned up green tonight. Are you going to pull the preach out of Mike? That's pathetic. Are you going to pull the preach out of mine? Have you come to hear the word of God? He can get whatever he wants to sing when he's done. I want to hear him preach. I think they're hungry, Mike. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Welcome the man of God to the pulpit. Mike, man. God bless you all. So humbled. Uh, I mean, really, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate uh, what y'all, I told Teresa, she came over there and I said, look at the friends God has allowed us to have across this land. And uh, uh, My daddy was a, a, a great man. He, he never was a preacher, but yet... Uh, he was a shouter and a, a preacher's friend. And uh, I, I've thought many times him and my mom were shouters. And uh, um, I miss those days. I've told some churches I go in and, and uh, <clears throat> I said, now tomorrow at 5 o'clock we're getting together I'm going to teach shouting classes. <laughs> Amen. They ain't not, you shouted everything else. I mean, if the wife burns the toast, what do you do? Honey, it's all right. No, you shout at her. You know you do. Best thing to do is scrape it off and eat it and just be quiet. Say amen right there. <laughs> but I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate Cal, and uh, he'll never know. And the, my, my, the honor it is to be able to do what I do and... Uh, I'll be the first to tell you I, I, I can't do it like I used to or even like I want to sometimes, but if God gets in it, uh, who knows what will happen, amen? If he tells me to turn cartwheels right down the middle, I'll do it. And if he tells me to run through that wall, I believe he'll make a hole when I get there. And if I do it on my own, you'll scrape me off with a spatula, Amen. But I do want to mind the Lord tonight. My, what a message. What a message from our dear brother, I'm telling you. And uh, uh, Somebody asked me a while back, and uh, we, I mean, we, we're together more than with any other preacher that I'm together with. Cal and I are together the most throughout the year. And uh, uh, somebody asked me one day, said, did it bother you to preach behind him or with him? I said, no. I said, not at all. I said, he's, he's the dearest friend I have in the, in the ministry, one of the top five in my, on my hand. And I, I said, we help each other. And uh, see, like he says, you know, he, he got that from me. You don't have to be smart. I just got to know somebody that is smart. <laughs> and Cal Ray's smart, amen. And, uh, and, uh, but every now and then, God gives me a nugget from glory. Yeah. And uh, you know the first one I call because I, I, God will give me something. I'll call Cal. I say, "What do you think about this?" And he, well, I've never thought about it that way. But you know, that's what he was saying. We need to work together. We're all in the same fight, in the same army. You know, uh, I don't care what circles you think you're in or what's over your shingle on your door. We're all Christians, saved by the same blood, going to the same heaven. Because there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, and by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Amen. I tell them I'm United Baptist. I go to church 
And I'm united with Christ. I'm old regular Baptist. I go to church regular. I'm free will Baptist. I believe that you have the free choice of choosing Christ or denying Christ. I, I can do whatever. I can, I can be Pentecostal, amen, because I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. And I still believe the truth's the truth regardless of what religion says, regardless of what denominational enterprise says, regardless of what our government says, the Bible is the rule that we must live by and go by. I know it ain't popular as it used to be in amongst a lot of people, even Christians. But you gotta remember, we're still getting by pretty good. Somebody was asking, talking to me the other day, and I said, listen, we're getting by pretty good. They said, what do you mean? I said, they crucified Jesus. We're doing pretty good. Amen. If you're going to preach the truth, they're going to ridicule you. They're going to talk about you. But they killed him, and bless God, I'm glad. And they're letting me, they can talk about me all they want to. I've been called everything in the world, but God calls me son. <laughs> well, enough of that. Amen. Get me a soapbox. I can, take, I can take it, brother. I'm telling you. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I kind of lost count when February and March we was in meetings one right after another and I, I kind of lost count. I know we've seen at least 30 people saved, uh, Cal and I and, and Brian was with us and some. We were here, there, and everywhere. And uh, So thank God and, and folks saved at our little church and uh, God's growing our little church and I praise the Lord for that. Had some more folks come in today. Uh, I, I've got that senior citizen church you got to be 55 or older to come to my church. <laughs> Only the, no, I'm just kidding. But we've got some young people now starting coming. And, and uh, thank you. Uh, thank those of you. Uh, I don't really mention feeding the, the babies to, to get money from people because we can pay it for it ourselves. But thank you for your donations. And God will bless you for that yeah. because uh, we've got little babies coming, little kids. Well, I call them babies four, five, six years old that their parents don't come and they come and we, we feed them and we'll make sure uh, they got everything they need. And uh, I, 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 somebody said, well, what if it grows to where you can't afford it? He'll, you'll never out afford, outgrow God. I mean, come on. That, you know, they, they told us when we started this meeting 20 years ago, 20, when, when 2002, they said, you guys are crazy. I said, well, I've been called worse. <laughs> Amen. And look here what God has done. Amen. Thank the Lord. All right. Enough of that. Let's get to preach. Romans chapter 8. I just want to read one verse. Uh, well, two verses, maybe three. If you're able, you know I'm, I, I, I'm going to ask you if you're willing and able to stand for the reverence to reading the word of God. And somebody said, why do you always do that? You might be sitting a while. <laughs> verse 31. Eighth chapter of the book of Romans. If you're there, say amen. amen. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered up us for him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. I'll stop the reading right there, and you can read the rest of that chapter tonight in your devotion. There's nothing can separate us from the love of God except we ourselves. I want to preach on this. I'm, I'm interested in this part of this verse right here. If God be for us, who can be against us? Let me say this. I was riding up I-26, just finished a revival many years ago in Forest City, North Carolina. Preacher Danny McCain, Pleasant View Baptist Church there. They're now in, uh, he's now in heaven. He got sick in COVID and passed on, a great man of God. And we were coming up I-26 and at exit 39, there is a sign, a billboard that has the restaurants on it. And on that billboard, there is a Krispy Kreme donut place. 
I felt God get in the car right then. It was early morning. The sun was just coming up. I looked over at my wife and I said, Honey, I seen she saw it. I said, Honey, would you like some donuts? She said, It's up to you. Men, that means yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I pulled in there. Come over the little bypass, over the viaduct there, over the interstate, and come over the hill and on the right. There it was, lit up. And you know God's in it when you pull in and the hot light's on. I, they got that little conveyor that then things run through in that, in that juice. And I, I, I thought, honey, don't bury me when I die. Just put me on one of them conveyors and let me float through there. Amen. So I wheeled around in there and the drive through got us a dozen hot donuts. Got her a cup of coffee. I wasn't hardly old enough yet to drink coffee and got me a milk. We pulled back on. I went down the road and seen those blue crosses that we see across our landscape, many places in our nation. And I was thinking about these verses. And I thought, if God be for us, who can be against us? About that time, I had a donut folded over twice. I'd stuck it in my mouth. It was melting, running down my throat. And about that time, the Holy Ghost said, Son, if God be for you, it don't matter who's against you. You're all right. You're going to win. So I'd like to preach just for a little bit tonight on this thought. Heaven is on my side. Heaven is on my side. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you, God, for this place. Thank you, Lord, for your people. God, I thank you for your power. I thank you for your presence. Lord, I ask you, God, to help me tonight. Lord, you know my limitations. You know my inabilities. You know my weaknesses and my failures. But God, I ask you to purge with me hyssop. Forgive me if there's any spots or sin in my life. God, redeem us, Lord. I pray that you would keep us safe. And Lord, help us tonight to realize that in this wicked world in which we're living, there's still a greater power. For where sin did abound, grace does much more abound. If there's lost here tonight. I pray you'll save them. Lord, I know you will if they'll only come. If there's those who are wayward, you are a restorer. If there's those who are hurting, you are the healer. If there's those who are battling disease, you're the great physician and can speak the word and they have to flee. Now help us, Lord, for the next little bit to preach only that which you'd have me to say. Guard my tongue. Keep me between the the bounds of this blessed book and we'll step over in the shadows give you all the glory and praise for we ask it in Jesus name amen, amen. you can be seated well I reckon I must say someone said why can't all meetings be like this meeting because I'd done be dead I guess but I'm glad there's meetings all over the place you know how come what makes a meeting a good meeting is when God's people will come together in one mind and in one accord wanting one thing and that's to hear from heaven what we need in our land today what we need in our churches today Today. We don't need no more programs. We don't need no more pamphlets. What we need is preaching under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And you can tell when God's in it and when God is not in it. I've always said, blessed is the preacher that can teach without preaching. I'm just not one of them. I'm a preacher. I told my folks when I come there, I said, I preach. If I show up, clean up, dress up, show up, I'm preaching. Unless I have someone else in to preach. I love teaching. I love to sit under teaching. But it just gets all over me. I just can't help it. When I start reading, how if God be for me, who can be against me? I read in the Bible where he said, I will never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. I'll be with you all the way even until the end. I hear him say like this, I know anything that's built up against you will not prosper. It will fail. Why? Because I'm hiding underneath the wings of the Holy Savior who's able to keep, who's able to protect, who's able to feed, who's able to do whatever we ask or even think. 
All things work together for good that those that love to serve the Lord. And I'll be honest with you, there's some things I've wondered how God's going to use them for his glory, but he does that. Amen. I don't, it doesn't matter. God can do with me what he will. I'm glad. Someone said, how you feel? And I said, well, what I can feel don't feel so bad. But bless God, one thing about it, I'm still able to go. And that's what I want. I told the Lord, it doesn't matter. I'll still go as long as I can go. Well, let me get in this. I feel the holy presence of God now. As a matter of fact, I'm glad he's here. Ain't he been here? Bless God, he's here right now. I will say this. If you're not saved, you want to come on and get saved. We'll pray with you and shout her out, and I won't preach a lick. You want to come? If you don't come, I'm going to preach. Amen. You better find your foxholes. All I can tell you, bless God, it's getting ready to go off in here. Amen. You, uh, no, just get right out there in the open. Don't be ashamed of what God wants to do with you. We've got so dignified. Bless God, we don't shout no more. Uh, I'll just say this. Uh, one old preacher told me, he said, son, if you've never embarrassed yourself, uh, you ain't never really got in the holy. Amen. Praise God. I say, look here now. Uh, if God... God be for us who can be against us. Heaven is on my side. How do you know that? Number one, because of my intercessor. Because of my intercessor. Who is that? I'm so glad you ask. There's many names that I could say tonight. I could begin like this. He is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and he's the last. He's the Rose of Sharon. He's the Lily of the Valley. He's He's the bride and morning star. He is the I am. He is the river of life. He is to those that are hungry the bread that never runs dry in the river that proceeds from the throne of God. Who is he, preacher? I'm glad tonight I know him as my dearest friend. Not only is he my savior, he is my protector. He is my guide. He is my God. He is my goodness. He is my glory. He is everything to me bless his holy name I say who he is but bless of all he's my intercessor that means he goes directly to God for me Yes, sir. What do you know, preacher? How is he your intercessor? By who this person is. He is the son of God. Amen. He was there in the beginning when God said, let us let there be light. And there was light. And he created the heaven and the earth. Bless God, I'm glad he was there. When Abraham went on the mountain to offer his son Isaac, and the Bible said the angel of God spake and said, do thy son no harm for we have seen that thou hast not withheld thy son from us only they ain't but one qualified to name himself equal with God and that's Jesus Christ who at that time was the pre-incarnate Christ whose name was Word because in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the same was in the beginning with God and without him there was nothing made that was made and all things were made by him and all things were made for him. I say glory to his name. I'm glad I know he is my intercessor in his person. He's the one that walks on the water. He's the one that calmed the raging sea. He is the one that spoke to the leper and said go and show thyself unto the priest. And one came back and said father I want to thank you. He he is the one that walked up to a dead man's tomb who had been dead for four days and said, roll away the stone. And they rolled the stone away. And he prayed, Father, I thank you that you have heard me always. But now I pray for those who are around about me. Hear my prayer. Lazarus, come forth. And from the tomb, from the 
dead. Uh, here he comes walking out uh, of the tomb. What do you say, preacher? He's the one on one day was in the tomb uh, and the next day he was sitting at the table uh, with Jesus. Uh, I say, bless God. Uh, I'm glad uh, he intercedes for me. Uh, I'm glad uh, he knows my needs. Uh, I'm glad uh, he knows my heart. Uh, I'm glad uh, he knows all about me. Uh, I'm glad uh, he is the son of God and I'm glad that I can say oh I wish somebody run for me right there I say glory to God hallelujah to his name he is heaven is on my side not only in the person of who he is but in the power of who he is he said I have all power both in heaven and in earth. Uh, honey, I'm telling you, uh, he still has the power uh, to speak to cancer uh, and it has to leave. Uh, he still has the power uh, to speak to all disease. Uh, he still has the power to give us peace and perplexity. He still has the power to give us calm and chaos. Uh, he still has the power that we can overcome the world. I say, blessed be the name of God. Somebody give him some praise to he is he is our intercessor not only in his person not only in his power but he's our intercessor in his position he's sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for us I say glory, glory, glory to his name I'm glad he knows what we need. Amen. There was a moment or two, I didn't know if I'd get a come or not. But I told the doctor, he said, well, you might not ought to go. I said, I can't not go. He said, well, take care of yourself. I said, I promise I will. Amen. I'm doing it right now. I ain't, but God's taking care of me right now. Hey, matter of fact, I can't feel nothing but the holy power of God. And I say glory to his name. Somebody ought to get undignified. Somebody ought to praise his name. Somebody ought to turn it loose and said if I in heaven on my side, I'd be in hell. I thank God. I thank God for who he is. Who is he, preacher? He's a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He's the one uh, that gone back and has won our salvation. And I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise uh, until the day of redemption. Uh, you can go back if you want to. Uh, I'm a going up. Uh, amen. Uh, might even go from right here tonight. Uh, that'd be all right too. Uh, I say blessed be God. Uh, uh, we need some old fashioned uh, Holy Ghost shouting uh, and some singing under the anointing of God. Uh, I don't care if it's on pitch. Uh, I don't care if it's on key. I just want it anointed with the Holy Ghost. We'll... We'll, we're afraid they'll call us uh, that radical bunch. Uh, look up here at me. Uh, I don't need smoking lights. Uh, I don't need black walls. Uh, I don't need fog machines. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, as Isaiah said, uh, when the year Uzziah died, uh, I went to the house of God uh, and his train uh, filled the temple and smoke uh, and I couldn't even get in. Wouldn't it be good if the power of God would get so big we couldn't even get in this place? Oh, holy God. Oh, holy God. Love you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for the action. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the power that you have tonight. Thank you for the rest. Thank you for the supplies. Thank you, Lord, for the healing. God, saints, <laughs> thank you, Lord, for the cloud of witnesses tonight. That I believe if they're looking over the balcony of heaven, they're rooting us on saying, keep on children. 
Keep on, children. It's worth the journey. When I step off on that beautiful shore, I want to see Jesus most of all. Oh, but I've got loved ones over there. My mommy and daddy's there. I've got siblings there. I've got loved ones there. I've got mentors there. That's got me to over the place that I'm at because they didn't care to take a little hillbilly boy under their wings who did not have no education, who was ashamed to get up in class and talk before his classmates who failed in English class because of that. But bless God, I'm telling you, when God called me, he put a desire in me to preach. And I don't care if there's three or 3,000 I ain't got but one gear I ain't got but one way and some of you lazy boys that's a sitting around in these churches not doing nothing if God called you to preach go preach if you can't preach to three you can't preach to 300 amen he is our intercessor heaven's on my side how you know that cause I didn't go looking for heaven I didn't know nobody in heaven, Buck, but heaven came looking for me. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Heaven came looking for me. Oh, if old Charlie's here, I'd have him on that organ about now. Amen. If my words didn't lift you up, the organ would. <laughs> Amen. But listen, he's our intercessor. He's our heaven's on my side because he interceded for me. Huh? Now watch this, heaven's on my side. Let me settle down here a little bit if I can. It's hard for me to get settle down, hey, but I'm gonna try it. I, want, I got something I need to tell you. Heaven's on my side not only because he's my intercessor, heaven's on my side because of my infirmities. Because of my infirmities. What do you mean? Now don't get mad at me. Hang in here with me and I'll prove it through the scripture. What do you mean your infirmities? Number one, my ignorance my ignorance. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with being ignorant. Hey man, stupid you can't fix. <laughs> yeah man, stupid you can't help. But ignorance is just lack of knowledge of a particular thing. I was as ignorant as a bull as, bless God, looking at a new calf and a new gate when it come to that. And even though I was raised in church, I knew the songs, I knew the prayers, I could mimic my pastor, but I was as lost as a hillbilly in New York City. But thank God one night, the second week of revival at the Staffordsville Free Will Baptist Church, the man stood who couldn't drive a car, who didn't have a car, who couldn't write his name, but he preached preached the gospel and said hell's hot and heaven's sweet and about that time the Holy Ghost breathed on me and I gave my heart to Jesus. I was ignorant to the fact if you read early in those chapter, in that chapter you'll find what the Bible says. The Bible says when we know not what to pray. Huh? Huh? You ever been there? Have you ever been there? If you ain't, just keep on living. You'll be there. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. I say glory to God, glory to God. Because of my ignorance, I read a story, Hoy, of a man. Uh, he was uh, his children had gone to bed. Uh, he was on his way to bed. He had locked and secured the home. He was walking down the hallway, and when he got going down the hallway, he stopped by his oldest little girl's room, and, and the, the door was cracked open, uh, and he heard her little voice uh, uh, calling on Jesus. Uh, and he stopped and he to listen to what she had to say. Uh, and here was the words she said. She said, Dear Jesus, a little pause. She said, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. 
Thank you, Jesus. I said A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And that father said she'd done that about five times. And he thought how peculiar. And he went in the bedroom and said, Honey, said, what are you doing? She said, Daddy, I'm a praying. He says, well, what are you saying? She says, I just don't know what to say, but I know God is very smart. So when I don't know what to say, I just tell him the alphabet, and I figure he'll figure it out. <laughs> Amen. I've been to where I didn't know what to say. What are you going to say, preacher? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z from the least to the greatest they know that and God don't listen all the time to our lips but he listens to our heart he is our intercessor heaven's on my side because of my infirmities, not only my ignorance, but my inabilities. I could not save myself. I'm not going to heaven because of a song I've sung or a sermon I preached. I'm going to heaven because as a nine year little old boy up Little Mud Lick, Kentucky, that makes me a little mud licker. I got the Holy Ghost and got saved. And if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you ain't saved. I don't care what they try to tell you. Somebody texted me the other day, said we've been thinking about coming to your church. But our preacher told us you don't believe in the Holy Ghost. I said, is that right? I said, well, I'll tell you what I do believe. Amen. I said, I believe when you're saved you receive the Holy Ghost because without the Spirit of God we are none of His they said you also believe once you're saved it don't matter what you do you're going to heaven that's a lie from hell too amen but I will tell you this I ain't saved today lost tomorrow and saved next night every revival I'm saved and I want you to look up here I'm so saved it's pitiful amen I want to be saved I want to live saved I want to leave saved and I'm going to be saved. Go to hell if you want to. I ain't going. Now, and then she messaged me back and here's what she said. Well, this really wasn't my name. I couldn't, my conscience wouldn't let me go on <laughs> under a false name. I said, does your preacher even know me? She said, evidently not as much as he thought. Pray for us, she said. I said, pray for us. I pray you tell me who you are and quit lying. Why do you need me to pray for that bunch when you're lying through your teeth? I sent her, I'll show you the email if you want to see it. I've got to word, bless God, I'm too old and too sick and too far down the road. They're gonna, if they, I don't like to fight, but I will, and I pray God help me kill them. Amen. You can love them to death. <laughs> Amen. That's the kind of world we live in. Somebody said, everything I hear about you, preacher, is good. I said, you ain't talked to the right ones yet. <laughs> That's all right. We'll be under the man that's spoken well of all the time. But it ain't personal. It's just because I preach it. Boy, I believe this book. I believe the book. I still believe. It's wrong to live together, not married. I still believe it's wrong to take another man's wife or another woman's husband. It's adultery. It's fornication. We've, uh, we've put a pretty name on it, but God says it's sin. Amen. I can't help but you prick the wrong one. Live with it. <laughs> Amen. You should have waited. You wasn't in love. You was in heat. Amen. Let's put it where it is. I lost some of you right there, but it's the truth. 
That's why we got a church like we've got anymore and a world like we got anymore. Nobody wants to stand and preach the truth. I know I'll get hate mail. I know I'll get bad emails. Some of you might even get mad at me, but it's the truth. Only thing you're supposed to try on before you buy it, shoes. I better get on with it. Amen. Preach like that, young boys, and see how many appointments you get. Amen. I ain't looking for nothing when I come down here. Got more than I can get to now. But bless God, I'm glad. Sometimes our inabilities, we, we, listen, when we started this thing 20 years ago, if some of them people were here tonight and alive today, I'm not sure they would recognize the modern day church. Most of them quit having church on Sunday night. And quit blaming your preacher. And preacher, quit blaming your people if they won't come. Bless God, if you're so sorry, you won't find and study nothing good enough to keep them coming wanting to eat. That ain't the people's fault. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Quit having church. I'm going to tell you something. I told them when I went, we're having it. And when I preach, I preach on prayer meeting night too, bless God. Yeah. Well, they can pray all they want to. They're going to pray while I'm preaching. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we'll pray all night and I'll preach a while. Praise God. Yeah. People just keep it coming. Yeah. But that'll get you in trouble too. Because there's a generation, 50 and older, I'll say, and, I don't, and there's some younger than that. They're used to going to church on Sunday nights. Yeah. Their church don't have church, so they started coming to our church. Yeah. I told them, come on, I'll feed you free. Don't cost you a penny. Don't even have to put nothing in the offering. Right. Huh? You know what happens? After a little while, they'll start showing up on Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> How am I doing right now? The shouting got quiet all of a sudden. One preacher called me on it. I said, listen, your people came to my church. I just loved them like I do everybody else. I just preached to them like I do everybody else. I thought that was, I was being pretty kind and as righteous as I could be. He called me the second time. I had done the same thing. He called me the third time. And I figured, now bless God, you called me the third time. It's time to get this settled. I said, dear brother, I said, I love you, and I want you to know that. But I said, I'm just going to tell you something right now. If your sheep get so skinny and get through your fence and get in my pasture and get so fat they can't get back, that ain't my trouble. <laughs> Amen. I don't preach from the Reader's Digest. I don't preach from the singing news. I don't preach from some book. I preach from the book, the King James Version of the Holy Word of God. Amen. Guess what? Hey, John, he ain't calling me back. Well, I ain't got time to worry about that stuff. I've lost some too. You know what I've done? I pat them on the head and say, go right ahead. Go right ahead. They'll call back in a few months, the preacher, could we come back? What's the matter? You found out the green grass only grows over the septic tank? Hey, man. I said, just stay where you are. You'll be all right. This foolishness has got to stop. I call them aquarium fish. <laughs> what's, the, what's that? They just jump from tank to tank. <laughs> Anywhere a little excitement rises up, you'll find them there. They don't even look back. They get there, they go there. Nobody willing to be committed and stay and fight the battle. But it's easy to do it when everything is hunky-dory and the bills are paid and plenty of money. But when it gets tough and when you face things, bless God, you don't know how it's going to do. Somebody says, does everything you do at church prosper? I said, yes, it does. You know why? Because I don't do nothing that God don't tell me to do. Amen. God has blessed us. We've remodeled our whole church. All we like is the bar. Let me counter. I better not say bar in the kitchen. I better use the 
right word, counter. My people go to the ocean, not the beach. The beach is not spiritual. Amen. Bless God. People arguing over stuff like that. God has blessed us that we were a few, but we keep growing. And you say you're bragging on your church. Yes, I am. I bring you, if you ain't got a church you can brag on, I'd find me another. Amen. I mean, my oldest deacon's 84. My trustee's on a walker. My assistant can't how to get to the house sometimes. He calls me and we have a good time. I'm his new pastor every day. I love him. You can say what you want to about him. Yeah, he's like me. He's got some quirks. But I tell you what he done that nobody else would do. He stayed right there in that place where there wasn't nobody would come. The association wouldn't help him. The nationals wouldn't help him. But he stayed in there with them few. And finally God said, go help them. They're going to sell it. I said, no, you ain't. We're going to build a church right here in the hood. <laughs> Say Amen. Praise God. Some they said, he's crazy. He don't have to go there. He don't, why would he go there? He can go anywhere. I want to be where God wants me to be. And by the way, I'm looking for a youth pastor that's got the Holy Ghost too and a good wife that don't talk about people. I've asked some, here's what they say, what's it pay? Nothing. Somebody, what do you mean nothing? You start out with nothing, you can't do nothing but go up. (laughs) That's how I started. My inabilities. See, I got people, the people are excited. If we get back to getting excited, I believe the world out there would get excited about seeing what we're so excited about. Well, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. Don't know what you're going through. Hello? Everybody's going through things. Let me show you right now. If this right here don't help you, I don't know what to tell you. How many of you here tonight, in the last, say, four or five years, I want you to stand too, don't be ashamed. God's healed you of cancer. Stand up. If God's healed you of cancer, stand up. You could be in a cemetery. Look at here. Look at here. Amen. What about some other disease? They told you you ain't going to live. You're going to die. Stand up. Give God praise. He's the reason you're here. Our inabilities. We can't save ourselves, but God can deliver us. Ruthie got her foot healed. I got mine cut half off. Just call me five toes. I told that doctor, we come, I come out of there. I said, Doc, I need to ask you something. I preached at Rubyville on a Monday night. Knocking on the door of death, didn't even know it. I laid on the pulpit and preached till I had no wind left and no strength left. My doctor was there. She said, Mike, you need to go to the hospital now. I said, Doc, I said, I believe I can make it through this meeting. She said, listen to me. If you want me to be your doctor anymore, I'll let you go home tonight, but in the morning you go directly to the hospital. I did. She acted serious about it. Let me just go ahead and tell you. See, I'm talking about inabilities and ignorance. Sometimes, sometimes, now listen, look up here. Sometimes being tough will turn into stupidity. If I'd have went when I should have went, they might have been able to save it. See, I had to go preach. 
God didn't require me to do that. That's just how I felt. When this other foot got bad, guess what, Jeff? I went the next day. <laughs> but here's what I asked the doctor when I, I was there eight days in the hospital. My sweet wife never left my side. The only time she left was to go two nights to finish singing the revival. Brian, Brian filled in my place. Mike McCoy was sick. He sang for me, and Joe Nelson preached the next two nights of the revival. But I went out of there, and I asked that doctor, would, would he come in to release me? I said, Doc, there's something that's been on my mind. It was during the pandemic and all that, you know, garbage. And I, I said, how come you to wait three days to cut my foot off? Yeah. He said, Mike, he said, I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> when I came the first day and I went home, I didn't think you'd be here the next day when I came back. The infection was so bad in my body. He said, I didn't really think you'd make it. And he said, I want you to know something. I may have taken your foot off, but I didn't save your life. God saved your life. So you asked me why I go? You ask me why I sing. You ask me why I shout. God gave me another opportunity to be with the people that I love. Over these last 30 years, we've grown together, we've walked together, we've cried together, we've shouted together, and God gets all the glory for it all. Heaven's on my side because of my intercessor. Heaven's on my side because of my infirmities. But heaven's on my size, side because of my inheritance. <laughs> oh, when you boys want to come and preach the rest of this, there ain't no notes. You'll just have to preach it off the cuff. But I'm going to give it a shot. Hold my hands up, boys, if I fall. Thank you, Buck. Buck said, you're looking awful serious. I said, I pray God don't let me fall. I took my shoes off. I can't walk on them stupid blocks and things. But I've got an inheritance. This meeting was founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Men far greater than me and Cal and Hoy. Men like Calvin Evans Sr. Men like Clyde Perry. Men like Roger Duncan. I say this to give Roger praise for being a mentor. I, 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 was, I don't know how come God allowed me to meet these guys and, and be around these fellas, but he did. When Rod stepped down from pastor and I talked him into going to preach revivals with me, I said, Rod, they want you to come. I said, and here's what we'll do. I, I said, here's how we'll work it. I said, you just come. If you don't feel like preaching, you don't have to preach at night. You don't have to preach at night. You just, they just want you to come be in the meeting. I said, all you have to do, I've got this thing watered up. He, I said, Rog, all you have to do is stand up and go. That's it. He looked at me and he said, are you serious? I said, yes, sir. I'll even give you half the pay. He was in then. <laughs> no. <laughs> but God allowed me to be around men like that. I remember the day Calvin Evans called me on my phone. I'd watched him all my life. Evangelistic outreach every morning before we went to Sunday school. Now, see, I was raised in a Sunday school Church of God and was saved and a member of the Free Will Baptist, so I'm confused Baptist, I guess, whatever. <laughs> Our church didn't have Sunday school for a long time, but Mom and Dad took, sent us to the Church of God, and they taught us the Scriptures. It was good. But we watched Evangelist Outreach, and you know what? It snowed on our television in July.
old Calvin be preaching his heart out in the snow just a falling and going every which way. One of us would hang out the window, turn it a little to the right. <laughs> oh, no, back a little bit too far. Picture come in for a minute, time they get back down off the point, it'd be gone again, the wind would blow it. Go back up there, somebody got to do it. Had your turn. And I remember the day he called me on my phone. And he said, Brother Mike? I said, yes, sir. I knew his voice. He said, this is Calvin Evans. Son, I like to wreck. I was driving. I pulled over immediately. I said, yes, sir. I said, how can I help you? Or what can I do for you? He said, well, if you would, I'd like to bring your, have your bunch come and sing for us in the camp meeting in Pedro, Ohio. I said, I said, sir, I said, you want us to come and sing at your meeting over there? He said, well, if you would, I'd really like for you to come. I said, I would really like to come. And we went there. Of course, Cal and I met at a New Year's Eve service before that. <laughs> oh, we've had some times. We could write books or make a movie and be multi-millionaires. Some, <laughs> some of them I get plum tickled at when I even think about them. It ain't always been what you see sometimes on TV. And we went. And uh, one night in that meeting, I believe it was Wednesday night, I'm, uh, whatever night Roger always preached, was the first time I met Roger Duncan. He preached on the anointing oil. Oh, yeah. Man, I never heard nothing like it in my life. Yes, sir. I mean to tell you, it was amazing. So I had friends by the name of Billy Fields who had been to my church a, long, a lot of times when he just started out singing. I'd been at his church when he was still pastoring. He went into full-time evangelism. So I called him. I said, come by and sing for us. We'll take care of you. And every time he come after that, he brought a pork tenderloin with him <laughs> so Teresa could fry tenderloin and make biscuits and gravy. That's a good guy brings his own tenderloin. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> There was another guy stayed in our home, done the same thing. Jack Lassiter stayed there. Had a key to our house, both of them did. We lived in Kentucky. Cal come and preached at our church. I had a little widow lady. All she had, she had no money. But every week, she'd bring me eggs. We have revival. I didn't get the eggs, but the evangelist did. I've heard Cal tell the story. That night she come in. I think she had at least two dozen. Might have had three. Give them to Cal. Said you're a. Showed him he. You're a good preacher. The chickens are laying good this week. <laughs> Son, it's good when you can preach to the chickens lay eggs. <laughs> Amen. I've heard some of them would starve to death. <laughs> That's, that was her offering. I went to work there for the first Sunday morning's offering. Love offering, they called it. Sometimes they loved me good. <laughs> you never preached, you never sheared them before the first Sunday of the month, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but you know what God was able to do? God was able to take that money and supply every need that we had. So Jack and Billy had talked about Tampa till I'd had it up to here. And I remember it. The only place I've ever been out of two or three counties around me is to Columbus, Ohio, because I had two sisters live there. So we decided we was going to go. I had a dear friend who's in heaven now. Matter of fact, somebody told me his widow was here or was here. Dwight Skeens, oh, yeah. Pastor yeah. and Bethany. Yeah. Yes. 
he had called me and asked me if we would come by their place and do a couple night service. I said, you know, I said, that would work great. I said, we're, we was planning on coming to the camp meeting to, at Tampa. He said, that'll work perfect. So we went and we had some great services over there. Yeah. Some friends of ours had moved down there and were working there and going to church there. Of course, I'd actually met them from Marion, Ohio. And uh, so we went to Tampa. I just, I just shaken hot hands with Roger and, and um, introduce, he, Billy introduced me to him and said, hey, this is Mike Blaney. He pastors a church up the road. <laughs> and Billy, Billy said, he said, I'm going to tell you something. Roger, he said, this boy could build a church in a mud hole. I thought, that's a pretty good compliment because I've stomped down a plenty of them. <laughs> so I never thought nothing about it. So we went to Tampa. The only Sunday, more only time in uh, the camp meeting, Roger Duncan preached that morning. How about that? One time. One time, and that was the morning we were there. And he had got done preaching. Son, I mean, he had filleted us. It was good. I mean, you had to like it because not only did he trim us up, he poured the oil in. He was the best at it I ever seen. And he walked down off of the pulpit. Now, at, at that time, you know, you've got Carl Nelson, you've got Lloyd Locklear, you've got all these preachers, Clive Perry, Calvin Evans. I mean, the whole way around, Billy Bevan, all these guys. I mean, these guys are nationally known. And I'm, here's a hillbilly sitting there amongst these guys. I'm sitting between Jack Laster and Billy Fields. So I'm, a, I, I, I'm looking real good because you sit by them two guys, you can't help but look good. <laughs> and Roger came down off the pulpit, and being the man he was, he started shaking hands with every one of them down through that. And when he got to me, now service is over, the Spencers are singing a song. The invitation's given, he's leaving. The Spencers are singing a song. Roger looks at me and he says, get your wife up there and sing. I said, right now? He said, right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> we got up, we sang. The band, I said, the band played. And, and as old saying is, the rest is history. Yeah. Came that next morning Hadn't planned on doing anything else. The singers for that morning couldn't be there. I told Ron, Ron said, what are we going to do? I said, we'll sing if you want us to. He said, that'll work. We got up. I had a band at that time. They played and the boys played. And we sang, ain't no grave going to hold my body down. And I thought Roger Duncan would shake me till my teeth would fall out of my head. He'd come right up behind and do it. And after, I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, heaven's on my side because of my inheritance. What's that got to do with it? I get to see them again. I could lay an egg preaching and Calvin Evans would call me the next morning and say, my, what a sermon. He know better. He, I know better. But it still felt good. And men like this and our parents and the people that have stood here and worshiped with us, I'll be honest with you. I ain't worried about silver and gold, walls of jasper and gates of pearl. I, I'm glad they're there. But two things. I want to see Jesus. And I want to live with Jesus. But my inheritance is the things that won't be there because everything is there. I'm already an heir to it. Now here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> All the singers, just get up here. All of you that sing in this meeting, if you sing, if you want to get up here, here's your chance. I was sitting by the pool today watching my grandson enjoy that little slide and stuff. And, and I watched him uh, begin to uh, make a conversation with a little boy. 
And then I seen them pass football and stuff together. And his Grammy called and said, we need to come up. And I, I said, well, he's in the pool. I said, I'll ask him. He come up and he said, Pap, give me 10 more minutes. I wanted to ask him if he'd asked that little boy if he'd brushed his teeth. <laughs> When that little boy come out of the pool, I knew he hadn't. <laughs> I'm not sure Jackson had, but nevertheless. But here, here's what I said. I've got dear friends, preacher friends here tonight. All of you are friends, been friends to our ministry. We, we love you for that. There's been some of your churches I've nearly went to heaven preaching in your churches. God gets so good. But I can tell you, I'm glad you're here. There's a whole lot of people I miss. So what I'm saying is, thank you, Randall. What I'm saying is, if you ain't saved, first of all, you need to understand. You're allowed to come here now. But if God calls, you can't go with us. I'm, I hate that, but that's the way it is. But you can make it right tonight and get ready to go with us. Because right now what we're going to do is, is your mama still here, Jeff? She had to leave. She, uh, we, we prayed for Jeff's mama. She's been through battles with others. Randy, where are you at, Randy? Preacher Randy, are you here? Randy Abbott, he's here. Just played a thing from the doctor to me cancer free then went through cancer glory come on I've seen him run around the church while I preached and we sang he might take a run tonight healed of cancer I'm not mad over that I'm happy others of you I've heard Cal tell about Candy writing the note, and he knew, he knew what was he probably knew what was in it, but couldn't read it. I'm pretty sure my name might have been in there, but I don't know. <laughs> but I'm glad he ain't read that note. I'm glad she's here. You might. Uh, what are we gonna sing, y'all? What are we gonna sing, Hoy? I love you. Yeah. Listen here. We're going to stand. The person sitting around you, the one you love dear, yeah. might not be here next year when we get to come back. So we're just going to have a time of loving. If you don't like hugging, just hold your hand out. I won't hug you. I'll kiss you. <laughs> but it's time we get back to doing what God's people need to be doing. And that's loving one another, caring for one another. And I'd advise you this. If there's somebody here, you got a little hard feeling that, you ought to go to them and tell them, this ain't worth it. Let's get rid of that stuff and let's go on to heaven. Heaven is on my side. I get to see them again one day. Why? Because of my inheritance. Let's see. If you're lost, I see yours traveling one day into Galilee and Samaria as he was on his way. He met ten of us uh -huh. who were lame with leprosy, and we were crying out to Jesus, begging for mercy. on our way we were all healed instantly as I look Listen. as I look upon my skin that now was clean yes. I could only think of Jesus what he had done for me that when my journey Position. I ran to him and fell down at his feet. And on our way, we were all here instantly. I said,
Yes, hold. 